Well, to this story now, one and a half thousand balloons were released this Valentine's Day as part of the Good Men Initiative. It is a celebration of men's efforts to become better versions of themselves. Trust Condoms, which runs the initiative, says the event aims to encourage dialogue about responsible behavior, especially in times of high numbers of GBV and sexual assaults. Let's uh, get more from Dinatse Mumbengui in just a moment. However, I want to show you uh, about a 40-second video of what exactly this event looked like. Will you embrace the fake? Or will you be real? Will you buy your partner flowers just to get into her pants? Or will you be real and show her true intimacy every single day? It's not about being a man, but what you do with it that counts. With the release of all these balloons, we symbolically invite all men to be men worth looking up to. Are you a man good enough to trust? Are you a man good enough to look up to? Well, let's welcome brand manager at Trust Condoms, Dina Tse Mumbengegui, to this conversation. Thank you so much for your time and a very good morning to you. It is a beautiful initiative, 1,500 uh, balloons launched in celebration of the good efforts of men. How significant and particularly important is this campaign, especially in light of what we're dealing with in this country? I mean, to be seen as one of the countries with the most you know, numbers when it comes to gender-based violence as well as femicide, it just seems absolutely unfathomable. And you guys are saying, let's celebrate some good men out here. Absolutely. So from our point of view, trust condoms are a product that men physically use. Mm. And the saying is rife that men are trash, men are dogs, because of the behaviors that they have been showcasing in their communities. So we say in South Africa, femicide is a thing, GBV is a thing. But what could we do and what role can we play as a brand to support men to want to become better versions of themselves? So we really wanted to create a platform where we're creating a space where they can have these conversations and they can support each other as men, as fathers, as sons, as brothers to then get on this journey of becoming better men in society and in their communities. But do we actually speak about good men in this country? Like, do we as a country even celebrate good men? Or is there still a narrative that the good men are boring and the good men are your best friend and the good men... But do we even create spaces where the man that buys you flowers and the man that says, that checks on you three times a day or the man that makes sure that you are safe is actually given the space of love, of respect? Because it comes both ways. We can't keep saying men are trash. But when the good men are around, we don't even acknowledge their existence. I'm sure there are spaces where men are celebrated, but we're not doing a good job as a society to highlight that and to focus on it. Mm. So the issue is that we focus on the negative as opposed to showcasing all of the good attributes that some of the good men who are in society have. And in doing that, we're kind of perpetuating these behaviors that, oh, what can we expect from men? Mm. And in turn, men then also feel this pressure to show up in a certain way, but don't necessarily want to be vulnerable because they're not allowed the space to be vulnerable and to be emotional and to cry and share their struggles as men. Because men will always tell us that it's difficult being a man. You're a provider, you're supposed to be a protector, and you also should be procreating as well. But in all of that, where do they have the opportunity to you know, take the load off their shoulder and share these issues and these challenges that they have. So really what we're trying to do is focus on that aspect and provide a platform for that vulnerability. Because I always believe that, you know, the, the actual narrative that men are trash, it not only puts poison on the women who have to live with men, but for some odd reason you'll be able to speak to us and say that it creates some kind of a polarization. I almost feel as though men and women in this country have reached a stage where they're completely polarized, looking at each other as enemies instead of people that are supposed to love one another and live together. But through social media, through these hashtags, through, through Twitter, through trends, we've created this enmity mm. between man and woman. And we see itself manifest in some of the violent crimes that we are witnessing. Where do we start? 
So it's, a, it's almost like peeling an onion because yeah. what we're seeing is the end of these issues that are bottled up and they probably don't have any way to release it. So our thought about it is just going to the core of it. So if you want to contribute to any change in society and behavior, we want to start with the individual themselves, how they feel about themselves, how they think about their contribution to society and how they think about contributing to the next man who wants to also strive to be a better version. So instead of focusing on how they will show up at the end of all these conversations, we are starting from the source of the issue who will have the opportunity to then change how they show up in society and how they behave and how they also deal with their sisters, their mothers, their friends and women in large. Yeah. I know that we'll talk a little bit about the men's conference, the real one by the way. The, <laughs> <laughs> the, the real men's conference. Not yes. the one that shows up a day before Valentine's Day because they all have to go pray for load shedding. But the real men's conference. Yes. Um, do you think that it has to start with us defining what manhood actually is? Because manhood almost seems to have been boxed in just your ability. If I can't provide, am I a man? And I wonder if patriarch in society as well also perpetuates that stereotype that if you're not a provider, if you can't provide, are you a man? Do we need to start from that genesis of when, I'm, when I say you are a man, what do I exactly mean? That would be a good place for us to start. So what we've done as well in creating the actual conference that will be following the release of the balloons is we partnered with two gentlemen who are quite um, prominent in terms of opening up these vulnerable spaces for men to connect and um, you know share their issues and their challenges. And they have been doing this work for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And they've been focusing on things such as connection, you know, how you also want to show up really as a better person and the collaboration was quite strategic so one of the gentlemen is Justice Mkele and Kahiso Modupe who have been having these conversations along the way so what we want to do and culminate at the end of all of these conferences that we have is for men to then define what being a man is. Is it what society keeps saying to us that they should provide and they should protect and they should procreate? Or do they themselves have a different version of what being a good man is? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're hoping to uncover at the end of it. And not as women telling them what it is that they should be as men, but them telling us that as men, this is what we feel our role is in society and this is how we want you to see us and you know view us and relate to us so that's what we'd like to get out of the conference i definitely hope that uh, you know this conference will start up a, a real change and, and perhaps even an evolution in the way that we deal with each other as genders really as a people in society mm -hmm. um so that we do not have this polarized kind of reality um of of men so this is not going to be just done on the 28th of february from what i understand is that you're going to keep having these kinds of dialogues dialogues yes. um, to build up the momentum of perhaps more transparency and vulnerability mm. amongst mm. men mm. yes so the actual conference is on the 28th of February and it will be a virtual conference so mm. anyone who's interested in joining in the conversation can do that and they can register to join the conference on our social pages so that's trust condom SA and in doing that we will have a series of conversations where we touch on different themes and different topics so we don't want to dictate the the dialogue and the themes of the conversations but we want to take what men would like to tackle and talk about in these different series and we can then unpack all of the different idiosyncrasies that come out and all of that how do you think women can can actually extend the olive branch in having this healthy safe space um, where men and women can just exist as humans the women have started, um, you know, really focusing on the negative aspect of men. So maybe, and it's because of, you know, how we have received their behaviors, such as culminating in GBV and femicide and all of that. But we do need to take a step back and stop dictating what a man should be. And let the man in your life or your son, your brother, tell you what it is that they would like to do and how they would like to be viewed. So as women, we should give them the opportunity to have the space
space to define what manhood is to them without dictating it for them because we're so quick to say you're a man you should you should you should you should or you shouldn't you shouldn't and sometimes we don't really understand what it's like to be a man in society so I would say women allow them to define what manhood is for themselves mm. and support them through through their journey in becoming better men and good men for society use trust for the trust of men <laughs> much appreciated for your time thank you uh, this morning thank you so much for joining us and I'd say who is the brand manager at Trust Condo.